In today's video, we take a look at the brand new Xbox One S all digital console and exactly what's wrong with it. And then we also take a look at some other gaming news. So let's get into today's video. Here we go, back at it yet again with another video. Good day guys, I'm Champ Chong and I'm actually very sick today. So if you wanna make me feel a little bit better, please smack that like button real good and smack the cold out of me because I am just not feeling too well, but I'm gonna try my best to create an awesome video for you guys with all the latest gaming news. So with that being said, let's dive into the first news report on today's video, which is all about the Xbox One S all digital console. Now, if for some reason you don't know what the Xbox One S all digital console, it says it in the name. This is an all digital Xbox One S console and it has no disc drive. And uh, a lot of people are kind of mixed on this. They're like, okay, great. This is good for people who don't want to use discs. And that's cool there, okay, they can play that. But then some people, they are like, okay, this is stupid because what happens if your Xbox One uh, bricks or just something happens? You're gonna have to re-download all your games. You might lose all your games, you might lose your account. That means you lose all your games. And there's just many problems that can come with this. And the biggest problem is the price point. Uh, here is something that's happening right now that is massive. So the Xbox One S all digital console will be retailing for 299 US dollars and it's going to be a pretty good price realistically but the interesting thing to note down is that the Xbox One S with one terabyte of internal storage and a disk drive like the original Xbox One S without like the all digital like it's just the regular Xbox One S with a one terabyte internal storage hard drive it's going to be costing $207.80 at Walmart and many other places are bundling it also at a much, much cheaper rate. So essentially what this does mean is the fact that the Xbox One S all digital console is going to cost you more than the one with a disc tray that can get you cheaper games physically, which is... Kind of stupid because it's the new console that's going to like be all digital and it's meant to be great, but it's more expensive, which kind of seems just a little bit, I don't know, just a bit unfair. And on top of that, some sources are even suggesting the reason that the non-digital version, like the one with the disc tray, is now cheaper and is being put on sale basically everywhere and less than the Xbox One S all digital console is the fact that they might be actually phasing it out, but I don't believe those reports right now. But what I do believe is the fact that the Xbox One S all digital console doesn't seem like a good deal because first of all, if you're going to pay about the same or more for something that doesn't have a disc tray, that can't play physical media, that's not that good of a deal because then you're kind of locked into only digital, which it's just for the same price doesn't seem like a feasible option. It just doesn't. Like, for example, what what if I want to sit down and watch a movie on a, on a Blu-ray? Because this is a Blu-ray disc drive on the normal Xbox One S. And I want to watch this uh, uh, Training Day, a great movie with Denzel Washington. Like, I want to watch this. Uh, it's an Academy Award winning movie from 2001. I know it's a random movie I could bring up and... I, I think it's, oh crap, like, I, it's broken, it's it's an old movie, and what the hell, Star Wars The Force Awakens is on the inside, I don't know why, so if you want to watch Star Wars The Force Awakens uh, on Blu-ray, and part of the Blu-ray uh, chip actually fell out, like the little plastic casing, um, you, you can't watch it on the one that costs more, and then on top of that, Moving away from movies, games. If you want to go into a store and you see a game for 10 bucks or 15 bucks on sale that you're like, whoa, that's incredible. You can't because it's going to cost you more digitally most of the time. There are hardly any ever big sales. For example, let's actually look at a game like The Division 2. So you can see on screen right here, this is how much it is in the Xbox store here in Australia. It's the full retail price. It's not on sale, nothing like that. But if we go to a regular store like JB Hi-Fi where I buy a lot of games, you can see it actually costs a lot less. You're saving a third of the price most of the time when you buy physically rather than digitally. And then you're probably saying, oh champ, that, that that's, that's not like a normal game that's gonna be on sale. What about the sales? Well, let's take a look at the sale list. As you can see on screen right here, the sale list isn't too good here in Australia. I don't know what it's like for Europe specific countries or the United States or Canada or anywhere else. I don't know, to be honest. 
But what I see here is a bunch of games I've really never heard of and that I'll probably not buy or play even though some of them might be hidden gems. Most of the time, I want to be playing something that I'm looking forward to, that I've been looking forward to for a while, that I've pre-ordered maybe. And I'm pretty sure it goes for the most of you guys out there too. And if you go to a sale in a regular brick and mortar store, a store like JB Hi-Fi, EB Games, GameStop, you know, one of those stores, regular video game stop, like shop, you're, you're, you're going to get yourself a pretty good deal most of the time and you're not going to find games at full retail price most of the time unless it's day one or the first month of the game being out or there are no bundles or anything like that so it's kind of a i don't know it doesn't seem like a really good option this is a huge problem with the xbox one s i know one of the big things that you will get with this is you can get a uh, xbox live uh, game pass membership for three months for a dollar which is amazing but you could use an Xbox One Game Pass on an Xbox One S or an Xbox One X with a disk drive and then play games physically and digitally and on subscription and you don't have to go through all this stuff. So I don't know, at the end of the day, it just doesn't seem like a good console to buy. Um, at first I thought this was gonna be great, it's gonna be cheaper and it's roughly about the same price and then a lot of the places are selling the older one, the older one, it's the same hardware without a disk drive. Uh, for less. They're selling it for less, so it doesn't seem like an option to go buy the all-digital non-disc version of the console. So, I don't know, unless Microsoft fix this, I advise you to not get that. And at the end of the day, I'm sure most of you guys probably already have an Xbox One console out there or a PlayStation 4, and it would be a weird time to buy this console. I don't know why they're really doing it since the Xbox One, or I mean, to whatever you want to call it. The next Xbox console is probably out next year, in a year and a half from now, next Christmas. So I, I really don't get why people are going to even buy this thing. So it just seems like a ridiculous thing to buy in the first place. Microsoft, figure out what you want to do with this console because uh, it seems like a bit of a mess. But anyway, guys, that does it for that piece of gaming news on today's video. And now we move on to the next piece of gaming news on today's video. It has to do with Red Dead Redemption 2. So for everyone on the PS4 and Xbox One, here are the Red Dead Redemption 2 update 1.09 uh, patch notes. So you guys can see them on screen right here. So basically the uh, online portion of the game has come out of beta now and you can get all this stuff in the online version and there are new story missions for co-op and free roam. It's Really, really awesome. But one of the coolest things I've noticed in this, which makes me want to load up Red Dead Redemption 2 yet again, is poker. Yep, you can play public and private games now, which just, I can't wait to be playing poker on there. Um, just a side note, uh, if you are on Xbox One, something I noticed uh, uh, in, in the Xbox store while I was looking at all the deals, at, uh, the sales, the special deals that are on Xbox Live's all digital store is Uno is only like $7.50 in Australia. So add me on Xbox Live. And I'll kick your ass in Uno because, uh, yeah, I'm going to draw four on you all day long. Anyway, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, I'm going to probably play a bunch of you guys in poker. It's going to be fun, uh, even though I suck at poker. That's why I prefer Uno because I'm a much more simple-minded person. Uh, <laughs> no, so anyway, let's move on to the next news report on today's show. I'm really showing that I am sick and that I just don't give a dang. Anyway... Uh, take two believes that loot boxes are perfectly reasonable mechanic. Uh, but I, I don't know about this guys. Uh, okay. So let's dive into this during take two interactive software's a financial conference call for investors and analysts, chief executive officer Strauss Zelnick, who is obviously the CEO, cause that's what chief executive officer stands for was asked to comment on the loot boxes controversy and this is what zelnick had to say he basically said uh they're just fine so you can see on screen right here he goes that mechanic was responsible for less than three percent of our net bookings in the past fiscal year so not material for us we have used the mechanic in the past so it is something we've seen and we think it's just fine there has been some noise around it, particularly internationally. As I said, we think it's perfectly reasonable mechanic. However, it forms a very small part of our business. I don't think that's the right way to go about it, especially as a CEO of one of the major game publishers out there. I think what he is doing, uh, the way he's stating this is kind of just kicking back, smoking a cigar, having a bit of whiskey and saying, I'm the CEO and I don't give a damn, yo. Like, it's just, 
it's stupid. It's not a responsible thing to do, especially with his power and responsibility in the gaming industry. And I don't respect that. He doesn't seem to respect the wallets of consumers, even though they might not be spending it in loot boxes in his video games. Loot boxes are terrible. They should not be in video games. I even like will go to the point and say loot boxes that aren't like that are just cosmetic and won't enhance your gameplay experience uh, from a mechanical standpoint, like from an actual advantageous in-game standpoint. I just don't like loot boxes. I'm pretty sure you guys don't because sure, uh, you can have stuff that you can buy, microtransactions in games. I'm 100% for that. But like microtransactions, skins for your characters, anything that doesn't make you better in the game and give you an advantage of other players that don't spend money, I'm 100% for that. If you want to have a cool skin, cool weapon skin, cool character skin, go for it. But if for some reason a video game has loot boxes in there that give you a chance, you have to buy 10 or 20 or 50 loot boxes for $100 and it just gives you a slight chance of getting that awesome skin or that awesome flag or something along those lines, that's just BS. That shouldn't be in the game. That shouldn't be in any video games because children are playing these games. They possibly have access to credit cards. And even then, let's say you build up points and you don't spend real money for these loot boxes in some cases. What does happen is these kids will get those points, use those loot boxes, open them up, and that'll get their mind thinking about gambling. And that entices gambling. And that is not a good thing for children at that age, because once they turn 18 or 21, depending on where they live, whenever gambling is legal, they've gone through it. And they'll want more and more and more. And it's not a good thing to get kids rolling into sort of gambling with loot boxes at a young age. So I, I think the way that Strauss Zelnick, the CEO of Take-Two Interactive, went about this isn't the right way. Sure, he didn't want to give a full statement. I, I, I understand. Um, but at the same time, you should be prepared for these kind of questions that you get in these quarterly earnings calls. You only do them four times a year. You should be prepared and give an actual proper statement to help the video game industry, especially if your company only takes in 3% from loot boxes, you shouldn't be going in and saying like, whatever, basically. Like, it's just not a responsible thing for him to do. Anyway, guys, I feel like I'm rambling. Um, I think I might have, yep, one more piece of gaming news to get to. So let's check out the final one. This is a really quick one. It's Rage 2. So Rage 2 uh, has its content calendar for 2019 now, as you guys can see on screen right here. It is actually pretty awesome that they've revealed this. And Rage 2 is a pretty awesome game from what I've seen. I haven't luckily been able to play it just yet. I'm definitely going to give it a shot though. So May, you can see the game launches. Then there's a world event. Then in June, July, August, and then the fall, which is like spring here in Australia, I believe. Uh, I don't know, like whatever. You can see, you, can, you guys can see exactly what's going to be happening. And a lot of this is free content, which is just awesome. So yeah, um, there is some paid DLC obviously in there, but that's paid DLC. You don't have to get all this stuff, but it's pretty cool that they've actually gone in and said, okay, this is our game. And we've also got all this extra stuff that we've planned for the future to keep the game alive and running. So I can't wait to see the community grow on that game. Uh, Rage 1 was awesome. Rage 2 seems to be even better. And it's all the rage right now. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, I have to go blow my nose. I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Please smack the like button if you did. And Strauss Zelnick, take some... Uh, uh, take some advice from me and everyone in the game industry. You're in a powerful position. Be responsible and speak up for the gamers, especially in your position. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully I'm not sick then because I'm about to sneeze. See you later.